Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Teach with Tyg. I try and teach science by using memes and gifs, and occasionally insulting you. It's only game. Why do you have to be mad? Don't ask me why, but you guys seem to love that. So I'm gonna just do that as much as possible. So if you think you'd enjoy being randomly roasted by a science teacher on the internet, click subscribe. Okay, so let's actually talk about what I'm covering in this lesson today. We're looking at atoms, elements, compounds and mixtures. And if you hang around to the end, I'll give you a bonus tip for your exams. So don't you go running off anywhere. Why are you running? So starting with atoms, they've got protons, neutrons and electrons. I'll also make a video about that in more detail. Now atoms, they come in all different sizes and mass. And there's a whole bunch of different atoms. I've actually made a video on the history of the atom. You should check it out. It's, uh, there's a, it should be a link somewhere. I don't know how this works yet. This is like my second video. If we get a collection of the same type of atom together, we'll call that an element. It's just one type of atom. Currently, we know that it's 118 different types of elements. And we've put them into this beautiful thing called the periodic table. What I like about the periodic table is it kind of reminds me of a school year group. Every element is different, but they're kind of grouped in similar ways. You've got your group ones. They're super basic. No, seriously, like they're actually alkali and really reactive. There's always drama with group one. Group two are a little bit basic. They wish they were group one, but they're nowhere near as dramatic. Then you've got your metal heads in the transition metals. Yeah. Stop it. Get some help. Group three to six are like your normal people. On the surface, they kind of seem boring and nerdy, but actually they do some amazing stuff. They're worth looking into. Group seven, they're pretty toxic. And they always seem to pair up with group one, which actually sometimes balances them out and calms them down. And right at the end, we've got group zero, the noble gases. They're the pretty chilled out ones. They don't really react to anyone. They kind of just float around and you almost forget they're there. Some of them will even give you a good laugh. Going back to that group one and group seven couple though, it's a bit like forming a compound. You can take two different elements, sometimes ones that are even super reactive, active and get them to bond together to form something stable just like that group one and group seven couple we call that a chemical reaction and those elements are bonded together just like that couple that's always kissing in school like seriously they're always Bruh. sucking the face off each other like you need to calm down so that's a compound now imagine another element that's hanging around all of these different couples but hasn't chemically reacted with any of them so they can kind of come and go when they please basically like a third wheel that's you <laughs> Yeah, that's me too, to be fair. Well, that's just called a mixture. We can easily separate them without having any chemical reaction. So compounds are chemically bonded, whereas mixtures are not. Okay, so where does this apply to you in your exam? So in an exam, you could be given a word or a symbol equation. Well, it's just like those couples. You're just taking their names and rearranging it to make something new. So let's take an example of someone named Nat and Cliff. We could shorten their names down to NA and CL as symbols. When they couple up, we just say NACL. Pretty straightforward. You'll notice that we have the same amount to people on both sides of that arrow. It's the same with atoms in a chemical reaction. Whatever you've got on the left, you have to have on the right. You can't have more, you can't have less. That's how it works. Right, if you've hung around this long, you deserve that bonus tip. So sometimes in a symbol equation, they'll add in the state symbols as well. And for some reason in exams, students never seem to fully understand what all four of them mean and make silly mistakes as a result. So keep an eye for them. You've got liquids, which have an L. You've got gases, which have got a G. You've got solids, which have got an S. And you've got AQ, which stands for aqueous. It means something is dissolved in another liquid. And if you see this symbol, it means you've asked for Batman to come rescue you from GCSE science, but he can't help you. He's too busy fighting crime. And he doesn't have a YouTube channel dedicated to helping you with science anyway. But I do, so you might as well click subscribe and help this channel grow. The more it grows, the more I can invest in it. Which means I could actually afford to buy Photoshop and After Effects and make these videos incredible. Now let's go past them GCSEs. I am the one, the way your son don't need a gun to get respect up on the street.